This machine here is particularly special. This is a throstle spinning machine. What it does is it takes cotton roving, which is a certain stage in the, in the process of making cotton thread, and it, and it finishes with that final step of twisting it into finished thread. What makes this machine particularly special is it's from the time period that they were spinning cotton thread in Slater Mill. And this machine was manufactured in New England. If you came here in the 1830s, it's possible that you would have seen something very similar to this. This is an original, authentic machine from that time that does exactly what they did in here. Now, I had mentioned roving. Roving looks like yarn, but it has not been twisted with that high-speed twist. And the high-speed twist is what locks the fibers into place. And so it's only been gently twisted and drawn out to just this diameter, just this kind of material. What this machine does is it takes two pieces of roving and it brings them down through a nozzle. And in that nozzle, they go through a set of rollers. These rollers mimic what for hundreds of years human hands were able to do. It takes thicker pieces of cotton and it draws them out into very, very few fibers. And once those few fibers come out of this last roller, they need to immediately get twisted and locked into place. And so this bale spins very, very quickly when the machine is on. And as it's spinning, it's twisting these fibers into finished thread. Now the spool is turning just a little bit faster than the bale is spinning. So as this whole process is going on, it's winding the finished thread while it's spinning. What makes this machine so remarkable is it takes one stage of cotton and continuously, nonstop, runs it through three different stages, right? It draws it twice, it twists it, and then it spools it onto the spool continuously, nonstop. And that makes this machine really remarkable. And what's great is it's still working. We can turn this on, and when people come in for a tour, they can actually get to see this machine spinning cotton just like it would have almost 200 years ago. So when Slater Mill opened in July of 1793, his first employees were children. They were 9 to 13 years old, and they did a job that was so simple, literally a child could do it. And Samuel Slater hired children because mainly that's who they used in England to spin cotton and work in the mills. So these young children would work in here, and their job would be to replace these spools when they became empty and replace these spools when they became full. Keep this machine running continuously. We don't know exactly how much money that they earned. They did not maintain a lot of those records from those early days, but it wasn't much. A child working on the farm would not necessarily be earning any money, but they could come here into Samuel Slater's mill and at the end of the day, bring money home with them from work that they did. And that was a huge benefit to local families. It was a great motivator to get people to work in here. Now, as far as safety was concerned, clearly there was no OSHA in mind. They did not have a lot of safety precautions in mind. People were very skeptical of this new system, this new kind of manufacturing, this new way of work. It, it, I think of it often in like the early days of the internet, right? If you think of the early days of the internet, folks were like, hmm, only a few people really know how this work, uh, don't really know what the future of this is gonna be. Some people were like, I don't think it's, it's just a fad, it's gonna go away, right? And other people were like, this is the wave of the future. Nobody really could anticipate what it was like, but they felt how new it was, right? And people felt the same way about manufacturing and industry here in, in New England. They were skeptical.
this was the first of its kind of of a new kind of labor at all in the first place. So it just so happens that he used children and there were reasons for that. But yes, children were were being were working here in New England. Children were working all over the world. Children were being forced to work to grow cotton in the South. Child labor was prevalent. In England, the first child labor laws were passed in the early 1800s. It wasn't until the early 1900s, it was a whole hundred years of child labor before the first protections against taking advantage of child labor, the first child labor laws were passed in America.